Well, good morning, if you would. Let's stand together. We're going to begin worshiping today with this great song. I want to read you a passage of scripture from Psalm 96, and it says this. It says, worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nation, the Lord reigns. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. What an amazing God we have. Let's sing about that this morning. You are good, you are good, when there's nothing good in me. You are love, you are love, all display for all to see. You are light, you are light, when the darkness closes in. You are hope, you are hope, you have covered all my sin. Sing it out, you are peace. You are peace, you are peace, when my fear is crippling. You are true, you are true, even in my wandering. You are joy, you are joy, you're the reason that I sing. You are life, you are life, when your death has lost its sting. Sing this chorus. I'm running to your arms, I'm running to your arms, the riches of your love will always be enough, nothing compares to your embrace, light of the world forever reigns. You are more, you are more than my words will ever say. You are Lord, you are Lord, all creation will proclaim. You are here, you are here, in your presence I made whole. You are God, you are God, of all else I'm letting go. Sing that chorus with us. And no. I'm running to your arms, I'm running to your arms, the riches of your love will always be in love, nothing compares to your embrace, light of the world forever reigns. Sing it out again. And oh, I'm running to your arms. I'm running to your arms, the riches of your love will always be in love. Nothing compares to your embrace, light of the world forever reign. My heart will sing no other name. Jesus, Jesus, my heart will sing no other name. Jesus, Jesus, my heart will sing no other name. Jesus, Jesus. My heart will sing no other name. Jesus, Jesus. One more time. My heart will sing no other name. Jesus, Jesus. My heart will sing no other name. Jesus, Jesus, and no, oh, I'm running to your arms, I'm running to your arms, the riches of your love will always be enough, nothing compares to your embrace, light of the world forever reigns. I'm running to your arms. 
arms, I'm running to your arms. The riches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your embrace. Light of the world forever reigns. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us. The music's going to continue to play. Turn around and welcome each other to service today. Tell someone you're glad to see them. Go talk to someone you don't normally talk to. And welcome them to service today at Hope. Church, as I said, welcome to all those who are going to be joining us later via live stream on the internet. We want to say welcome. We want to say welcome to Hope Church. Thank you guys for joining us here. Thank you for worshiping with us today. We just wanted to welcome all those who are visiting us, all those who may be here for the first time or the 10th time or the 100th time. We want you to know that God loves you. He loves you so much that he sent his only son to die for you. We want you to know that God has a purpose and plan for your life. Even the good, the bad, the ugly, everything that's happened in your life has happened for a reason. We may not understand all the things going on right now, but we have a promise that all things work together for the good of those who were the called according to his purpose. So we know that, that God has a reason for you. You're here on purpose for a purpose. You have a reason for being here. And then the third thing we want you to know is that you have a home here. If you're looking for a church home, if you're looking for somewhere to be involved in worship, um, we believe it is our mission. We are Christ-centered and others-focused. We believe it is our mission to help people to discover that love of God and to experience his plan for their life, to experience that love and then to just discover that plan that he has for your life. So we hope and we pray that, uh, that you continue to allow God to speak to you and that you're obedient to what he has for you. We're going to continue worshiping today. I want to read us a verse of scripture here, a couple verses of scripture from Hebrews as we sing this song. It says, and since we have, this is in Hebrews chapter 10. It says, and since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as the habit of some, but is encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. What a blessed assurance that we have, that we can draw near with a heart full of this assurance of faith. I want to sing this song together, Blessed Assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. Sing it out. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. 
visions of rapture now burst on my side. Angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission. All is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. Sing that chorus. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. I want to take just a moment to encourage you and challenge you to be a part of a ministry. You know, we have many um, opportunities here at this church to be a part and to give back. Part of our worship, part of our worship is to be a good steward of the things that God has given us and to kind of give those gifts back to God. We know that every good gift comes from the Father. We are, we are called to be good stewards of those things. And part of being a good steward is to give back to Him, to give back to God, to be a part of this ministry, both with our time, talent, and our treasure. God has given us all these gifts so that we might be a blessing to others. As you know, God has given us these gifts. The Bible says that he's given us this gift in earthen jars of clay. It's part of his plan. God's plan is to use his people to share his message of hope, but also to be a ministry to others and to give, to be the hands and feet of Jesus. So we want to encourage you to be a part of this ministry to be faithful in your giving to this ministry. You guys know the ways to give. You can see them on the screen behind me. Uh, you've heard it many, many times before. We wanna encourage you. Maybe you're here and uh, you just need a little encouragement or maybe you're here and you haven't started giving back to God yet. We wanna encourage you to be a part of this, to be a part of this ministry um, by giving back to God in your time and your talent and of your treasure. To be a good steward of the things that God has given you. One of the most popular verses in scripture is John chapter three, verse 16. You guys could probably, almost all of you could probably all quote it back to me. But it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, that the world, <coughs> excuse me, but in order that the world might be saved through him. That's John 16 and 17. The next song we're gonna sing is all about that love, that God sent his only son to pay for our debt so that we should gain from his reward. So I want us to worship today as we sing our last worship song before Brother Ben comes. We've talked about the fact that he is good and he will always be, he will always reign. We've talked about the blessed assurance that we have in him. But I want to sing about this love. Let's lift our voices and sing it together. beyond all measure that he would give his only son to make a wretch his treasure how great the pain of searing loss the father turns his face away 
has wounds which mar the chosen one. Bring many sons to glory. Behold the man upon the cross, my sin upon his shoulders. Ashamed I hear my mocking voice called out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. I will not boast in anything, no kiss, no power, no wisdom, but I will boast in Jesus Christ. His death and resurrection. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. His wounds have paid my ransom. Amen. Father God, we just thank you for these songs that we've heard. Thank you for the message from your word that we've heard, God, the promises that we've sang about. We thank you, God, that you are a good God. We thank you, God, that you are forever. We thank you for the blessed assurance that we have in you, that we can have hearts full of faith. And we, God, we thank you for your love, for sending your son that we should gain from his reward. God, we just thank you for, spirit, for sending your son to pay for our debt so that we can live for you, live with you and live for you, God. We just pray that you would be with the remainder of the service, that you would speak to hearts, you would give us the courage to be obedient to your voice. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Can we put our hands together and praise our Lord today for who he is? And for what he's done. Isn't he worthy, Charles? He's worthy, isn't he? Turn with me in your Bibles to Psalm chapter 23. Psalm chapter 23. It's good to be in God's house today. And it's great to see all of you. Did I see the cases back? Are they back? Well, it's been four Sundays. Y'all don't know I count, do you? They acted like they've had COVID, but I know what they're doing. I'm just kidding, Carrie. I know, I know, I know. Brad was just uh, playing hooky. He's supposed to have COVID. And he sends me all these texts all the time. I can't even share it with y'all at church. It's, they're so bad. Anyway, Psalm 23. We'll read our passage and then you can be seated. The first four verses. Gabe, how are you and your wife doing today? Good to see you guys. Uh, <clears throat> I like that hat you had on yesterday. We need more saved people in the Hope Church. <laughs> Dylan, his hat was the OSU hat, if you're wondering. So Psalm 23. Brother Ben, I don't know what the deal is with his shoes today, but he's got, uh, y'all have to go see him about that. <laughs> they kind of, they, like, they do look like OU colors. Hey, we're going to continue our study uh, on Limitless Life. This will be our, our, our final message, uh, message number five. I, I hope that you have, uh, have been able to, to uh, get all four of our previous messages. If not, you can see all those online. And do pray for our, our uh, internet provider. 
that uh, that we're kind to them when we talk to them. But uh, we're having, we haven't been having a lot of trouble, and there's another provider that hopefully Brother Sean and I have been talking and uh, and been asking, and they're supposed to be in this area real soon, and we can actually get what we're paying for. Wouldn't that be amazing to get what you're actually paying for? So, uh, but I'm thankful for that we can put our service uh, in 4K HD quality around 12:30 today. It just is not live stream. So everybody that's watching later, we're glad that you're watching. Amen, church. The Bible says in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside Stillwater, Oklahoma. That's what it says, right, in the King James. Beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And I like to preach expository sermons where you go verse by verse. But today's message I want to focus on one phrase in verse 4. The Bible says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Amen. Would y'all read that out loud with me together? Verse 4. Ready? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Just to recap, if you girls will help us, uh, message number one was on limitless aim, the power of a focused life. Message number two was limitless attitude, the power of having courage. Le message three was limitless altitude, the power of God's grace. Last week was message four, limitless allowance, the power of giving and how God gives to us and we're to give to others. And today's message is limitless awareness, the power of of God's presence. Father, we ask you today that you would come and speak to hearts. I believe this message is going to be a blessing, God, to all of us that are listening. And so I pray that we would all be listening today. And God, we would all do and obey what you're speaking to us about today. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. You may be seated. Let me ask you something. Where is God in your life? You might say, well, Brother Ben, I don't really want God in my life. And I want to tell you, if that's true, God's not going to force himself on you. But I will say this, you don't know what you're missing. And I'm going to say that again at the end of the message. Or maybe you'd say, well, Brother Ben, sometimes I feel God is there and, and sometimes I don't. And sometimes I'm close to him and sometimes I'm distant. Well, let me ask you, what's going on when you feel close to God? Is it that he's meeting my needs, that you're in church, you're reading the Bible, you're praying? What, what is it that makes you feel distant from God? Is it because something is missing in your life? Is it because you feel there's something that he's not working towards your best advantage? God says, I'm everywhere. And he is everywhere. We acknowledge that today, right? How many of you believe that? Let me see your hands. When you look up at the sky, especially at night, you study astrology, you learn about all the planets and how absolutely perfect their schedule is in relating to each other. And all the fantastic things beyond your comprehension, you know there is a God. And He's in charge. And He's in control. And everything, we need to be reminded, I believe, from time to time, and maybe, maybe this is right in the middle of where you are, God knows exactly what He's doing. He knows what's going on. He knows what's going to go on. And He knows how to meet our every need. Can you say amen? Everything's going how he wants it to go today. Down here on earth, we make a mess of all kinds of things. But those of us who trust him, we have an awareness of God that others don't have. So I want to ask you, why would you want to live your life apart from a loving, sovereign God? God. Why would you want to live without a loving father who wants the best for you? So today, we're going to talk about the awareness of God's presence. Everybody say awareness on the count of three. One, two, three. 
Psalm 23, 4 says, you are with me. All throughout scripture, God uses that phrase in different ways to different people. We, we talk about the Old Testament, we talk about the New Testament, but it's evident from the Bible that our awareness of God's presence is vital to whatever that he wants to do in our life. Starting in Genesis, the Bible says that Enoch walked with God and he was not because God took him. What a sense of awareness that Enoch had. God told Noah to build an ark. And one thing he told him, he says, you're going, you obey me, I'm going to be with you. And even in those times when he was persecuted because others didn't understand what he was doing, even his own family, God was with him. Abraham, God told him, he said, I want you to get up and I want you to go to another country. You're going to leave your family, everything that you know. God, God didn't even tell him where he was going. He just told him to leave. But he did tell Abraham, he said, Abraham, I'm going to be with you. When God spoke to Moses, he gave him the challenge of going before Pharaoh about letting the people go. And God said, Moses, I'm going to be with you. When God began to speak to Joshua, he told him he wanted him to take over for Moses. And Joshua thought, man, this is an impossible task. But God said, Joshua, listen, I'm going to be with you. When God talked to Gideon, Gideon told God, he said, my family is the lowest in the whole city. Why are you asking me to do this? And God said, here's what I want you to do, and I'm going to be with you. When David was fighting Goliath, David told Goliath, he said, my God is going to deliver you into my hand, because David knew God was with him. When God called Isaiah and Jeremiah, they were prophesying in a very difficult time in the nation of Israel, and he told Isaiah, he said, don't be afraid, I'm going to be with you. And Jeremiah looked at God and he, he said, God, what's this? And God said, I'm going to be with you. Remember what Jesus said to his apostles when he sent them out? Y'all know these verses in Matthew 28. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And lo, I, Jesus said, will be with you even to the end of this age. Remember Jesus talking to his disciples about him leaving, and he said, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. He said, I'm going to come back to you <laughs> so you can be with me, and I'm going to be with you. At Pentecost, God the Holy Spirit came to inhabit the life of every single believer. Do you know Jesus today? Can you shout amen? amen. You have the Holy Spirit of God living on the inside of you so that when you and I got saved, the third person of the Trinity inhabited our life at that very moment, enabling us to live a godly life in an ungodly world. I think about the Apostle Paul, the many times that he had to rely on the presence of God in his life. He was put into prison so many times for spreading the gospel. He suffered many horrible things for Christ's sake, but through it all, God was right there with him. Paul comes to the end of his life, and here's what he says. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. There was the awareness of the presence of God and the peace that God gives to his servant who follows him and obeys his will for their life. All of these people that God used, they were aware of the presence of God in their life. Look at me and listen. God has not changed. Hebrews 13 says that God's the same. Say it with me. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The moment you accepted Jesus into your life. Do we have any Christians here today? Do we have anybody here that knows Jesus? The moment you accepted Jesus into your life, you had just as much Jesus as the Apostle Paul and all these other believers we read about in Scripture. So you and I need to live. We need to live. We must live with this limitless awareness. In other words, always being aware of the presence of God in us and around us. You can live your life as a believer without an awareness of the presence of God in your life. 
In fact, I'd say we live a lot of our lives that way. That's not good. And that's not the way God wants it to be. When he talked about that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, he's talking about Satan. He says, but I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly or live it to the full. He's saying, I want you to be always aware. I want you to have this limitless awareness that I'm with you. I mean, yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, God is with us. Amen. There's a family right now, their son was addicted to drugs. And I don't know the situation fully. But he's basically, they don't know if he's going to live or die. And he's was on machines. I, think, I don't think he is now. But I think it probably his brain's not there now and so they're begging for God's people to pray I've got I don't even know how many children I got now how many we got I'm going to tell you something if that was my son I'd want you praying but I would just encourage that family if they see this message if you know that family send them this clip Maybe just clip this as a clip, Brother Sean, so we can send it to him. But God is with you guys. David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. God's with you guys. And your life may be the best. You, you might be on the top of a mountain today. Aren't you glad God's with you on the mountain? Man, it's so awesome when you're going through the valley. It's not awesome going through the valley. I'm not finished with that statement. When you're going through the valley and you feel the presence of God, is there anybody here that's experienced that? There's nothing like it. And that's what David's saying. Yeah, either I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He's saying the worst times of my life. I'm not worried. I'm not fearful. God hadn't given me a spirit of fear, but a power loving of sound mind. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they come for me. If you live with an awareness of his presence, it will change your life. Adults, would y'all just help me out here? Because I, I don't know, I just, I, I, wanted, I want our young people, we say it all the time, and hopefully we're living it in front, but I really want our young people to get right now, while they're young, how amazing and awesome our God is. Amen. So would y'all back me up today and help me shove it down some of their throats? That God's amazing. And he's with them. And he's always going to be with them. And they need, as a young person, they need to have an awareness of God's presence. Come on. But for them to see it, we need to live with an awareness. And as a Christian, we can live without the awareness of God's presence in our life. But if we live with his awareness of his presence, it's going to change us. Today, I want to give you a bunch of evidences that will alert your awareness of God's presence in your life. I think I have, I don't know, six or seven main points. And then the last one, I got a whole bunch of sub points. But I hope you'll take good notes. Hopefully you have a worship guy there that you've already flipped over. The first thing I want us to see is we need, if we're going to be constantly aware of God's presence in our life, we've got to have a vow before God. What does this vow entail? Letter A, that God is continually in my thoughts. I mean, it's like a mother with a newborn baby. So the baby's like three days old. This mother, this mother is going about her work around in the house. But even as she's doing all that, subconsciously, there is something inside of her that is always aware of her child. Mothers, is that true? All of us have a conscience and a subconscious mind. That as we go about our day, listen, no matter what's going on around it, God is there. It's almost like a holy silence that's within us, but God is there. The issue is, are you aware? 
Are you aware of God's presence in your life? He needs to be continually in our thoughts. But this veil also contains letter B, that we're continually seeking his guidance. If I'm aware of his presence, I'm gonna seek his guidance. We, I mean, we all make decisions every single day. And some people make decisions totally oblivious to God. Say, well, Brother Ben, I just don't feel like, I don't believe that I have to ask God about everything. Well, maybe you don't need to ask him about what color shoes you wear. But we all face decisions every day, do we not? In our job, in our family, etc. So I want to ask you, when a decision comes up, how do you make that decision? Do you ask God, Lord, what do you want me to do? God, give me wisdom to handle this. Let me ask you, what area of your life is God not interested in? Are, are there any? The correct answer, everybody say, is none. I mean, that's an amen. Since that's true, I should be aware that God has a preference. I mean, we're not talking about shoes and clothes. We're talking about decisions that we make that not only affect us, but affects those around us. And if I'm aware of God's presence in my life, I'm going to be aware that when I need to make a decision, I need to ask God about it because not only is his presence important to me, but his preference is important to me because I'm thankful that God's with me, but I want to please God and I'm going to do what he prefers. When someone says something to you because of God's presence in your life, the Holy Spirit of God will sometimes nudge you and he will speak to you, not in an audible voice, but he'll give you an impression. No, you shouldn't do that or you shouldn't be involved with them or that or he'll even tell you when there's gossip going on around you that that's hearsay. And you know what hearsay is most of the time, right? He'll tell you not just when it's hearsay, but he'll tell you when it's just downright heresy, when it's just total false against God. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will say, go ahead, walk through that door. I'm in this. I want you to do that. I want you to go there. I'm so thankful today that God loves us. And God loves us so much that he wants to lead us into his will. But you need to make sure that you are constantly seeking his guidance. So those are very important vows. Continually in our thoughts, continually seeking his guidance. The second thing I want to talk about today is we need to have a proper view of God. Letter A, we must view him as our constant companion. If I view God as my constant companion, then I'm aware of him. God wants to speak to us about things that we have never even considered, stuff that he wants you to think about. He's ready to reveal himself in ways that will literally amaze you. So if you're living in the awareness of God's presence, guess what? He is your companion. Would you say that he is your companion today? How often are you aware of his companionship? If you're married today, I want to ask you to do something. I want everybody that's married to say, I'm married on the count of three. Ready? One. Y'all ready? All right, one. I want everybody, all the married people say, I'm married. Ready? One, two, three. Now, those same people, I want you to say, I'm very happy on the count of three. One, two, three. Whew. Jasmine, it ain't been that long. I mean, you still should be. <laughs> Let me get another sip here. <clears throat> if you're married, are you aware that your spouse 
is your companion. Yes, you are. You better be sensitive to what goes on. And all the men said, God, we come to you right now. If my wife is going some, let's say, let's say she's going to the mall and I knew there was danger at the mall. So it was an active shooter or whatever. I heard about that and I knew she was going there. I would instantly alert her. Why? Because I haven't upped her insurance pot and I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> because I'm aware of her and I love her. I want her to be safe. Parents, what about your children? Regardless of them being in school or wherever they are, you're aware. Why? Because you love them. And you want to be immediately told if something is going to happen. Would y'all say amen? Let me ask, what about Jesus as our companion? Think about this. The most powerful force in the world is in the person of Jesus. He is omnipotent, he is omniscient, he is omnipresent, he's all loving and so many other things. So can you tell me a better companion than Jesus Christ? No. That is, this is how a person can go through a difficulty or a hardship and a, a loss in their life and they can keep on being faithful to the will of God because Jesus is their companion. He's there to guide us. He's there to help us. God knew what was gonna happen in this world. He framed things in such a way that he is our constant companion, that he will see us, watch this, he will see us through everything, not just so that we can survive, but so that we can thrive in our lives because he's with us. His presence is with us. Let her be, we view everything in the light of his presence. When I view everything in the light of the presence of God, whatever is going on has to go on in his presence. That gives me a sense of safety. That's true of sin. That's true of good deeds. Everything that goes on, goes on in the presence of God. There are no secrets with God. Nothing is hidden from God. Everybody say everything. Everything we do is in the light of God's presence. Now, that could be a woeful thing if I'm not doing right. But listen, that could be a wonderful thing. And one of the wonderful things is we have peace in the midst of storms because we all go through storms. But what keeps us is knowing that God is with us. Are y'all with me? I mean, the first thing we got to remember when we go through a storm is, yeah, I'm in this storm, but God's in this storm with me. What did Peter say when they were in the boat? What, did, what was the promise? Yeah, we're in this storm, but the Savior is in the storm with us. He's in the boat with us. First thing we got to remember, I'm in this storm, but I'm in this storm with God. And when you begin to sense this awareness of God, everything in life changes. I'm asking some obvious questions today, but we, we need to think about this. What in the world is more powerful than God? I mean, God sees our storms before they even come. God's already working. You say, well, Brother Ben, I have a huge need today. Well, listen to me. If you will view that need in the light of God's presence, we're talking about the Lord Jesus Christ here. He is able to meet all of your needs. If I'm living in the awareness of God's presence and a need arises, I don't have to worry about it. I may not have an answer at that moment, but I know that he knows all my needs. And actually, he knows our needs before their needs. And because he does, he's already prepared to meet that need. So with, with eyes of faith and voices of faith today, if you believe 
that he already knows those needs and he's already prepared to meet those needs. He's already got provision for your needs in the future. Would you say amen? Would you shout amen? amen. Some people are deeply in debt because they didn't stop and ask God to provide that need. They just made a decision themselves apart from God and now they're in a mess. And that's why number three is so important. Please write number three down. Voice of God. That needs to be the most important and loudest voice that you have turned up in your life. Letter A, awareness of his presence creates a hunger in our hearts for the word of God. You hear me say this all the time, but you should begin every day with the word of God. Whether it's one verse or a chapter or whatever it might be. Reading the word of God ignites us to think about God. <laughs> and to realize that he is going to be with us that very day. So if you, if you don't read the scriptures, I can tell you exactly what's gonna happen. The awareness of the presence of God begins to diminish because it's the word of God. It's the voice of God in your life. It's the hand of God at work. And we go through a situation in our lives I don't know how he does this, but this is God. Somehow in his amazing knowledge and power and grace, he will point out a scripture that we need. And that scripture gives us peace and it gives us guidance about what we're to do. Because it's the word of God that brings me back to the what? Awareness. <laughs> Awareness that I have God. <laughs> I have God to help me through this, no matter what it might be. So this is why you should start every day with the word of God. Because when you read the word of God, God speaks. And sometimes the only thing you get from reading the Bible is peace. But where'd that come from? God, how much is that worth? To have peace. Or God may trigger your mind to something that he knows that you're going to face that day. Has that ever happened to you? Has me. That is why if we are living in the awareness of God's presence, we don't have to worry about forgetting this or that because living do not miss this living in God's presence doesn't mean that you're going to have a perfect memory but it does mean that God will assume responsibility to bring to our minds and hearts the things that we need to remember does that make sense letter B Prayer needs to be a priority in your life. We're talking about the voice of God. We need to start God every day with God's word, but prayer needs to be a priority. It's not that you say some short prayer when you're in trouble, but you're talking to God all the time. I don't know how you do this, but I can tell you how I do it. When I'm by myself, or whether I'm walking around my house or I'm outside or I'm driving down the street or I, even I'm here at the church like this morning and I talk to God, I talk to him out loud. And it's not that he's hard of hearing, <laughs> but sometimes I need to hear it, right? And so the other night I get home and go through the routine and I go over and get Joan out of the other car and, and we go inside and I've got... As usual, I'm loaded down with stuff, you know, walking in the house. Well, I get up to the bedroom, phone. I can't find my phone. I can't find my keys. So I go for about the next 20 minutes looking for my phone and my keys. And I'm going up and down and outside and all retracing all, you know what we do when we lose stuff. Then all of a sudden I'm like, man, this is ridiculous. I mean, am I getting that old? Dorothy, Dorothy says, you need to shave. I said, why, Dorothy? I said, why? She goes, because you look old. It makes you look older. I said, thanks for the encouragement, sister. I appreciate it. <laughs> then I looked at Bill, and I said, listen. I said, Dorothy's not my boss. <laughs> and he said, I know who your boss is. I said, shut up, sir. Uh, I said, my boss said she likes it, so that's why it's still on my face. So thanks for encouraging me, Dorothy and Bill. They're, they're great encouragers. But I looked several times all over. And then finally, you know what I did? I just said it out loud. I said, God, I know that you know where they're at. <laughs> Would you please help me find them 
And I'm telling you, the very next place that I went, they turned up. You say, well, that is just, that's a coincidence, that's silly. No, I don't think it is. I think that God amazingly works in our lives and he is interested in every aspect of our lives. How many of you believe that? I can't tell you how many times this has happened to me about other things. The moment I pray, there is a peace that comes and inevitably God answers my prayer. Can we give a shout out today to our great God who answers prayer? Have you had a prayer answered? Has he mightily answered prayer? Can we give a shout out? I go to this, uh, this, this school, I'm, in, I'm invited and I'm standing in the back and there's probably 300 people in this room. And uh, all of a sudden one of the kids gets up and, 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 and says, uh, we, wanna, we wanna, now we're gonna do our shout outs. And basically saying we wanna, this is the time to praise God this morning. And so one of the kids stands up and he goes, I want to give a shout out to blah, blah, blah. And everybody goes, shout out. And then they go through it. I thought about doing that at church. I want to give a shout out. And then y'all supposed to say, and that's about how I thought it would go. So that's why I ain't done it. Check this slide out right here. I want to give a shout out to my God who's amazing. And he answers prayers. This is what happens when you don't read your Bible. Who killed Goliath? <laughs> COVID, right? <laughs> Let me ask you, is, <laughs> is prayer a priority in your life? Is God's word a priority? We need his voice to be the loudest voice in our life. God, you need, listen, if prayer is not a priority in his words, you need to make those things a priority in your life today. And then we get to number four. But write this down. Verbs of action. Verbs of action. Letter A, you sift every decision through his will. Lord, what is your will about this? What is your will about that? We all face things that we're unsure about. If you're aware of the presence of God in your life, guess what? You ask God about it. You sift every decision through his will. Now, some things are okay. Some things look good, but they're not good. But God will help you so you don't make the wrong choice. You sift every decision through his will. That's a verb of action. But letter B, another one that's very important, is you walk in obedience to God as a way of life. If I'm going to do this, I have to be aware of his presence in my life. I want to share a truth with you that it may be revolutionary. It may, it may be, maybe sound real simplistic to you but I still think it's true and I think it's powerful and I think it'll help us so I want you to listen to this next statement you ought to write this statement down it's the biggest statement on my whole sermon I've got it like this big on the page if I held it up you can probably read it can you read that from there what does it say go ahead Oh, am I covering it up? That's it. You do not have to sin. You don't have to sin. You say, well, brother Ben, I'm just a, and I made this statement this last week. I'm just, a, just an old sinner saved by grace. Well, that's true. We are. But I think if you, just think about it for a moment. If you wake up every day with that thought, well, I'm just a sinner saved by grace, you are programming your mind to sin against God. Well, I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. I'm going to fail. But it should be, I'm a saint saved by the grace of God. I, I may falter. I may sin. But I don't have to today. It's my choice. Do you understand what I'm saying? If I'm walking in obedience to God, why do I need to sin? What I'm trying to convey here is this, we accept sin as a regular way of life, but sin is a personal choice. Because if we're living in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, why do you want to disobey God? What does disobedience gain you and I? I mean, you might have a, a temporary gain, but the more you look at it, 
I mean, it just becomes absolutely rotten because it doesn't fit you as a child of God. The more aware you are of Jesus Christ in your life, the less you will tolerate sin in your life. That's why what an old timer said is still true today. The Bible will keep you from sin and sin will keep you from what? From the Bible. The more aware you are of Jesus in your life, the less you're going to tolerate sin in your life because it doesn't fit you. It doesn't feel right because you're not a child of the devil anymore. You're a child of God. I'm thankful today that if I stumble, if I fall, I can ask God for forgiveness and I can get back up again and I can keep walking in his presence. Can any saint say amen? amen. But here is the statement right here. The more I am aware of God's presence in my life, the less I'm going to be tempted by anything. Because it's the lack of awareness that makes the difference. And I want to close with a very controversial word here. Number five. <laughs> Somebody asked me recently, are you vaccinated? I said, wouldn't you like to know? I said, none of your business. I'm not here to talk about, you know, whether you should be vaccinated or whether you shouldn't. It's a personal decision. And if my friend's watching, God bless you, brother. But here's the thing about this vaccination. Why did they come up with this vaccination or these different ones? And, of course, now you got to get boosters every so often, right? How many boosters are we on now? Four, three? I don't know. Just gonna keep, you're going to keep, the way it looks now, you're going to keep getting shots, you're going to keep getting COVID. And I've heard people say that people that have gotten vaccinated get more sick and people, and then vice versa. I don't know. I mean, Dr. Fauci is definitely inspired by God, would y'all agree? <laughs> but it's not about vaccinations and all that. Why, 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 did the, why is vaccination given? It's to help you, just protect you. Exactly. And it's to keep you from ultimately dying from this virus, right? This is what I want to preach about right now. The vaccination factor for Christians. Are you listening? God wants you and I to spiritually live like we never have before. And there are some things that you and I need. Just like the vaccinations. It's supposed to protect you from that deadly virus. There are some things as Christians that God wants to inject inside of us that's going to keep us from dying spiritually. And I want to give those to you right now. Letter A, I will have a stronger, if I'm aware of God's presence in my life, I will have a stronger intimate relationship with Jesus. If you really married, I asked you a while ago, if you're married, if you really love your spouse, you're going to do everything you can to have a strong intimate relationship. And it has nothing to do with sex. People always want to immediately talk about sex whenever they hear the word intimacy or intimate or intimacy it has nothing to do with that. Intimacy is all about how you feel about somebody, how you love them, how you want the best for them. So the more aware you are of him or her, the more intense your sensitivity will be towards them. And that makes for a wonderful, joyful relationship. The Lord wants us to have that kind of relationship with him. To love him, to have a strong, intimate relationship with him, to be aware of his presence, no matter what's going on in our lives. Letter B, you are more conscious of the good things that God sends to you. There are people who are blessed every single day and they don't give God any credit. Let me tell you what our Bible says. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. But if I'm not aware of his presence, guess what? I'm going to give somebody else the credit. And you'll hear people say, well, I was just real lucky. I'm going to tell you, Christians don't get lucky. We don't ever get lucky. We get what? That's right. Everybody say blessed. When a person is aware of the presence of God, this is how we talk. Hey, 
This is God being good to me. This is God being good to us. Let her see you feel like continuing dependence upon him. Let's say that you're driving down the road tomorrow. You're doing, I don't know, about 40 miles an hour. And somebody is speeding. And they're coming. You're going one this, this way and then they're going this way. And they run a red light. And they look like they're coming right towards you. What's your response? You can't talk like that at church? Is that what you said, Shirley? <laughs> she didn't say that. I, I set that up. What would you say? <laughs> well, that's close. Somebody else, what would you say? Say what? Yeah, Lord, help me. Help me. Gee, what are you saying, Marilyn? You're living in the awareness of his presence. God wants you and I to be aware of him at all times. Everybody say all. At all times. Letter D, you continue to have hope even when things look hopeless. You ought to write this down. A child of God is never hopeless because God is our hope. God is our strength. God is our helper. God is our guide. God is our sustenance. God is our Adonai. He's our everything. And there are things that come along life and they seem hopeless, don't they? But they're not. Letter E, your worship is more real and rewarding. Do you realize that you can come to church on a Sunday morning and not worship God at all? It's the awareness of his presence. Some of the songs we sing, man, they just make you want to just stand up and shout. And Why? Because of his presence in your life. Because he is good. He is mighty. And when we are aware of his presence, our worship is more real and more rewarding. And that's the way God wants us to live our daily lives. People go to church every Sunday with problems and heartaches and needs and hopeless situations. And they're hoping, hoping, hoping that they're going to hear something that will encourage their heart. So when we live in the light of God's presence, God will give that hope wherever it is needed do I have any witnesses in the house? Amen. And letter F, don't miss this one. This needs to be injected in every Christian. You will have a joy in your heart. You have an all-powerful, all-knowing, ever-present God living on the inside of you. Nothing else might give you joy in life, but that ought to give you joy. Everybody say, I've got the joy, joy, joy down in my heart. Ready? One, two, three. That's pretty good. Let's say it again. Ready? I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Where? How does it go? I've got the joy. Sing it with me. I've got the joy, 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 joy. Now, y'all were saying it, but you're not singing it. Where? Down in my heart to... It should give you joy. But it's all about our focus. So our focus should be where? Where should your focus be? On God. Listen, nobody can follow you around like God does. There are times when your best friend is long gone. There are times when your family's gone. But I'm going to tell you, as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are are never alone. No, never alone. God wants you and I to live in such a way that realizes we are never alone. Let, let's say you're sick. Many of us have been coming off sicknesses. We've been a lot of sicknesses. Let's say you're sick. And you go to your medicine cabinet and in your medicine cabinet, you, there, there's a medicine there. It's exactly what you need. But you go to this cabinet and you look in there and you see ibuprofen and you see Tylenol and you see aspirin and whatever else you got in there. 
but you pass by the medicine that you need because you're not aware that that's the one that you need. A lot of people are in trouble because they live their lives unaware of the presence of our Lord and his willingness to help them. For some people, it might be an unforgiving spirit. They've been praying and and trying to figure out why God is not answering their prayers. Listen, you and I, we must live our lives with our spiritual tentacles out, asking God, God, is there something that you're trying to deal with me about? Because awareness of God's presence changes everything. There's going to be a what in your heart. J-O-Y down. I mean, we're going to back to children's church today. J-O-Y down in my heart, deep, deep. My favorite part is, and if the devil doesn't like it, he can sit on a tack. And the kids, man, they love that. Livy and I used to teach children's church, three to six-year-olds, about 35 of them every Sunday. And that's where my gray started, I guess. Man, we get that, that every Sunday. No matter what songs we're going to sing, everybody, that, that was our number one requested song. And their favorite part, if the devil doesn't like it, he can sit on a tack. And then what? All the kids go, ouch! <laughs> but our favorite part should be, I've got the J-O-Y. Please feast your eyes on this one of the screens in front of you. Isn't that a cute picture? Olivia showed me this picture. This is Gabby's second birthday. She showed me this picture yesterday, and I said, send that to me. I said, I've got the perfect point. And I said, I've got a point that I'm going to talk about having joy in your heart. And this is what my wife said. She said, well, look at that face. There is so much joy in that face. And it was so cruel what her mother did to her. I don't know where Kathy's at. She was here earlier. She sat her down in front of this cake. She said, don't touch it. And Gabby's going. She didn't touch it until it was time. And then you know how most kids are like, it's all over the place. They're like, she's like, go ahead, you can get the first, you can taste it first. And it's a big cake like this. And she just goes like this on the very top of one of the ribbons. She's like, and it's like this little bitty drop. She eats it. And of course, everybody gets cake after that. But like I said, most time it's you get in there and you put it all over your face. Well, listen, that's the way a lot of Christians are with this joy thing that God has given us. That the devil can't, the devil didn't give it to us. The devil can't take it away. Yeah, we're just getting, we're just coming to church and we're reading little scriptures here and there and we might pray a little bit and but when we really need God, you know, well, oh God, and we get real, but it's just, and God says, man, I want you to jump full, both hands and legs and everything into this cake of joy that I've got for you. Now, is that a dumb illustration or what? But it's true. Everybody say, J-O-I, down in my heart, deep, deep down in my heart. There will be a joy. And as we close and we go to our last slide, life is more peaceful when you live in the awareness of God's presence. When you are aware of his presence in your life, he changes your viewpoint because you begin to see everything in the light of God's presence. That means that you're safe and somehow God's going to work everything out according to his will. Can y'all say amen? Amen. So to close our series and this fifth and final message, how is your awareness? Is it limitless? Are you aware all the time of God's presence in your life? Would you pray with me? Father, thank you for your presence today. Thank you for preaching this message to each of us, the power of your word. God, there are people here today, there's things that they need to pray about. I pray that they would use this opportunity during our invitation time to come into your very presence and to talk to you about whatever it is. God, there are young people that are here today. You're speaking to their heart. 
there may be one that needs to accept you as Lord and Savior. There may be an adult here that needs to accept you. God, there are people here today that you're speaking to them about various things. And I pray when we stand that, God, if you're speaking to us about anything, there's anything we need to pray about today, we'd take this opportunity on this last message of this series, on this last Sunday in January, we'd come forward and find us a place to pray in your presence. With the heads bowed and eyes closed, we're going to stand, and when we do, we're going to have a verse of song. And if God has spoken to your heart today, I'm going to ask you to come and join this one that's already come as we stand together. We're going to begin singing. If you need to come and pray, young person, adult, come right now. Shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God. I come, I come, Brother Ben. I'm here today, and I've got a need that I'm praying about. Would you help me pray about that need? Would you just slip your hand up where you are? God, we want to pray for these needs right now. We want to ask you to be with each one. We know that you can meet them and God, that you're providing a way even now. We pray that you would just have your will done in each of our lives. Thank you for these that have come forward. I pray that their needs will be met right now according to your will she you would have your way thank you God for being who you are we praise you today that you are in our lives whether we are aware of it or not all the time help us to have this limitless awareness of the presence of God thank you God we love you Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Amen. I want to challenge you today if you're here and you're not sure that Jesus is your Lord, we'd love to talk to you about that. Please come and see me before you leave. In church, we don't want anybody to leave today's service without knowing Jesus. Can you say amen? So please, I'd love to talk to you about what the Bible says about knowing Jesus. If you haven't filled one of these out, I'd, I'm asking you today to fill one out. We've got some there on the Welcome Center. And uh, every, the last four Sundays, there's been people there just filling these out. And so we've got several of them. But some of you have not yet. So if you would stop by, we want to make sure we have all your correct information. And again, it will help us to more effectively minister to you throughout the year. And I'm excited about 2022 and what God has in store. As one preacher, I hear him say all the time, he says, your best days are right in front of you. And I think that's the way that we need to live our lives. What are you laughing about? Uh-huh. Brother Zach. Just a couple of announcements before I dismiss today. I want to remind you guys that we are having our Wednesday night Bible studies this Wednesday night at 6.30. So if you uh, can join us at Wednesday at 6.30, adults will, uh, men and, and women's Bible studies are coming soon. Uh, but next week we'll have corporate uh, with the men and women. Teenagers, we are starting our new series this Wednesday. We plan to start it last Wednesday. I was on call and I was working until about 9 o'clock, so obviously I couldn't be here. Um, if it makes you feel any better, I was in a, a really terrible attic um, with raccoon poop all around me. So I paid my debt to you guys. I'm sorry. Um, I wasn't able to be here. This Wednesday night, we are going to start our new series for the teens. It's called Good Reasons. Um, we're talking about, are there good reasons to believe? Um, we're basically, it's an apologetics type lesson, but it's, it's more focused on just, you know, are Christians just dumb? Are we dumb for believing in God? Is there good reasons to believe in God backed by science and logic? Um, and we're gonna, it's going to be a really good study um, for you guys. Um, it, this first lesson, uh, the main point of the lesson is going to be discussing doubt 
And then we're also going to go a little, little uh, prerequisite in a little bit of Logic 101, talk about a couple things that are important. So we're going to be uh, sharing some good stuff with you guys. So we are setting the frames for the arguments that we're going to be making that, yes, there are good reasons to believe in God. So it's a great opportunity uh, for you young people to learn a little bit more about how to defend your faith and how to really have the assurance that, you know, we have good reasons to believe. So join us for that uh, study this Sun, uh, Wednesday night. Super Bowl Sunday, February 13th, young adults and teenagers. I want to invite you guys to a fellowship. We'll be having location to be announced, um, but I can tell you this. Um, we're going to be watching the Super Bowl. We'll have games and prizes and different things like that, so it's going to be a really good time uh, for you guys to join us on that evening, Super Bowl Sunday. I'm already working on a couple games as far as trivia and prizes and uh, Super Bowl squares and all that good stuff, so join us, young adults, teens. We're, um, like I said, I'll let you know on the location. We're going to have food, games, prizes, obviously. Obviously, the game will be on, um, and it'll be a good uh, chance to fellowship with us. So plan for that February 13th, um, plan for that uh, Sunday night. And then, like I said, uh, we are excited about Kids Club coming up later this month, February 27th. Mark that on your calendars. If you need, if you want to get involved with Kids Club, it's an awesome opportunity where we bring kids from the neighborhood, from the community into the church. We feed them a meal. We tell them we have, we, t we teach them the Bible. We play, play some games. We sing with them, and it's a really great time. Um, it's, uh, like I said, the kids love it, and they come here, and uh, it's just a really great time. If you want to be involved with that ministry, you can see me, Brother Ben, uh, Miss Michelle Leonard, or Miss Olivia Langley. They will get you guys uh, plugged in um, if you want to be a part of that ministry. It's a great opportunity. And I think that is all the announcements I have except for one more announcement. I know it's a way in advance. It seems like forever way, but I promise it'll be here before we know it. April 17th is Easter this year. And this year we are planning something special for Easter. Can't tell you about it yet. Um, but we're planning something special for Easter this year. So invite your friends and family to be here. So put it on the calendar right now. Um, hey, be here. Can you be here for Easter? And just start bugging them right now. Maybe by the time Easter gets here, they'll be here. So invite people to Easter this year. That's all the announcements I have. I would like to ask Brother Steve Fancher, can you dismiss us in a word of prayer?